What is something you are better at than most people? I am better than most people at being not sure, being faithful, and singing. I have a good memory. Using the search option. Deadlifting. Part of me wishes I went to the gym so I could understand like why people like deadlifting so much because it looks painful and awful. What is a TV show that virtually nobody hates? How it's made. It's a very non-offensive show. I mean, you know, just watching how things are made. <laughs> Bob Ross's Joy of Painting. I feel like there's probably a couple people who don't like it, but nah, I don't know them. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Reading Rainbow. The Joy of Painting. If you've got kids, you know. Bluey for the win. I don't have kids and I don't plan on having kids, but yes, Bluey for the win. Anything with David Attenborough. The Magic School Bus. Now you do gotta clarify, are we talking about the original Magic School Bus or are we talking about the new one that kind of looks like Poo Poo? None. I'm sorry if it upsets you, but there's bound to be some idiot that's going to hate your favorite show. It's true, unfortunately. People just like to not like things. The Muppet Show. Sesame Street. I mean, hey, I'm sure there's a few kids out there that really hate Sesame Street. Avatar The Last Airbender. I really wish I could get inside the mind of people who don't like The Last Airbender because I've met a few of them and I don't know how they're living. Futurama. Still a little nervous for that new season they're thinking about, but we'll see what happens, I guess. What's single trope can cause you to fully lose interest in a movie slash show. If an entire conundrum can be solved by just someone waiting one minute for the other person to explain, but chooses not to. Irritates me to no end, and I'd much rather stop watching the movie. Fathers that are stupid slash literally cannot parent for comedic value. The useless dad trope. Something that can be fixed right away with just a conversation. A lot of older Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn comedies are like this. If they just took two seconds to communicate or not lie about something really stupid, their partner will understand. There would be zero conflict. Uh, but you see, because it's a girl, they're not, they wouldn't, they just wouldn't understand this kind of stuff, you know? It's because there's a girl, and but I'm a man, so I know everything. She was a busy business lady that only had time for business. He was some jackass womanizer with chlamydia. Will these two incompatible people go through a series of unlikely events, fall in love, have some minor misunderstandings, then get together in the last few minutes? Find out this fall. I can't really explain it properly, but I think this type of rom-com was just purely a product of the 2008 recession. Disobedient, stupid children who ultimately end up getting their parents killed or put them in danger. That was heroes every season. The cheerleader started every season being idiotically defiant only to realize that her dad was right at the end of every season. Character dies at the end of the story for no reason, just because of shock value and they needed to kill someone. The clumsy, nerdy, awkward girl who are normally played by the hottest actresses out there. Every time they do that, it really defeats the purpose of the message of nerdy, awkward girl gets the guy. Cop with family problems. Yeah, we get it. The job's so important that they've sacrificed family time and regret it. And now they want to be the parent that they failed to be in the past, but this new case is so important. Also, every single cop keeps a secret bottle of whiskey in their top desk drawer. I'm not a cop, and I don't have drawers on my desk, but if I did, <laughs> I'd have uh, fun little toys in there. Shaky Cam. I hate Shaky Cam. I think Shaky Cam can be good, but sometimes people will really just throw their hands around holding that camera so you can't see anything. All the men are diverse in age and attractiveness, and two to three total women are 20-something bombshells. Amnesia storyline. It is a little bit tired. I, I am kind of sick of seeing it, but sometimes they make it interesting. Thing. What's something extremely overrated that people buy anyways? Those new release Nikes. They've never been all that to me. My boyfriend might kill me for this because he's a fanatic, but Starbucks coffee. Overrated, but extremely successful. Probably the factor of convenience and now sentiment with holiday traditions, but I've found many other places where the coffee is just genuinely so much better. If you want quality coffee, don't go to Starbucks. Like, go to your local coffee shop. They more than likely have much better quality quality overall. Expensive diamonds and jewelry. You know, diamonds are basically just rock poop, you know? Like, it's just so much pressure and pulled down. It's just rock poop. Why, why do you want that on your finger? Shoes. Sneakerheads baffle me. Who is spending $150 plus dollars on shoes you won't even wear outside? Makes no sense. That's how I feel about a lot of luxury brands like Supreme, like Gucci, all these other things that people don't really even wear. They just have it for the status symbol. Video game insurance. Uh, uh, I've never in my life heard of video game insurance, so I think you 
might have just been scammed. Anything in a free-to-play game. Looking at you, Fortnite people. Subscriptions to Twitch Girls. I mean, I guess, but also, like, mind your business? I don't know. Funkos. Definitely overrated, but I mean, hey, you can like what you like. It doesn't matter. Subscription boxes. It really sucks, because years ago I was getting Loot Crate, and they had good quality stuff, and then they kind of slowly went downhill. Anything made by Salt Bay. I think generally anything made and sold by somebody who's only popular for one meme isn't gonna be great. Literally any Apple product. However, I am no better than any of these people. All my Apple products last forever. My MacBook is almost 10 years old and is indestructible. Defo value for money. I mean, sure, like they're constructed very well until they decide to give you a software update that bricks your device. What's the best pie? Not a big fan of pie myself, so I'll stay quiet. Warm blueberry with some vanilla ice cream. Okay, that actually sounds really nice. I want to go savory, but some of them depend on the definition of pie. My absolute favorite, if it's just anything called a pie, is shepherd's pie. Okay, can't lie. Shepherd's pie? Banger. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good. Pecan. Or is it pecan? I, I never learned how to actually say it. 3.14159265359. No, no. Keep going. You gotta say the rest of it if you're gonna bring up pie. Pizza pie. Obvi. Pizza pie makes me think Chicago style, and I have to say, boiling hot take here, I hate Chicago style pizza. Cream. Duh. Oh, I see you, naughty naughty. Steak and cheese. I'm sorry, who is hurting you by giving you a steak and cheese pie? Boston cream. Coconut cream. Apple. I feel like apple pie is a good introduction to pie, because like, I've had a few and they're, yeah, they're standard. Chicken pot pie. Oh my god, I almost completely forgot about pot pies, and I think I need to go to the store now. Probably banoffee pie. Made with a graham cracker crust, a layer of toffee, slices of fresh bananas, and a topped with whipped cream. So light and simple, but very satisfying. Great with coffee. You might have just unlocked my mind, because that does sound very tasty. Why would anyone want to live in a cold climate? For me personally, I think snow is really cool, and I can handle the cold because you bundle up. In the heat, what do you do? Take your skin off? I grew up in a cold climate, and I lived for a while in a hot climate. It didn't feel natural to me. I guess it's what I'm used to. Allergies. When it gets below freezing, mold and pollen producers go away. It's immediately allergy relief until the spring. Not as many dangerous insects slash animals. Oh yeah, that's another huge plus, like barely any mosquitoes and hardly any spiders in the house. Oh, I'm living the dream. Our ancestors moved here because the snow renews the farmland. There are droughts, but nothing like you'd see in a hot climate. There are no hurricanes. Tornadoes are an extreme rarity. The land and the air and the sky go on forever. And we're here because we've grown accustomed to it. Being sweaty and sticky f***ing sucks, lol. I gotta agree with them. It's awful. I run extremely hot. The cold is instantly calming, while heat immediately raises my anxiety. Give me cold AF over hot any day. As a lifelong northerner, I can always layer up. If I'm in too warm of a climate, there comes a point where I can only take off so much before authorities get involved. I hate the heat with a raging passion. And in the summer, I can't wear shorts or tank tops because I burn faster than a match to gasoline. Heat is just a major inconvenience to me. I can always put on a jacket outside and be warm-ish. I'm still going to be sweating even if I'm naked in a hot climate. No bugs and no weather so hot it makes you dizzy. The cold never bothered me anyway. Oh my god, it's been years, okay? Can we just let it go? What is your first impression when you hear someone saying, I go to therapy? I guess a general good vibe from them because they recognize there might be something wrong, so they're trying to fix it. Bro, that person trusts me enough to open up about it? I feel honored. Good for them. So much better than hearing, I have all this pain buried deep inside and I refuse to speak to a therapist. It's the truth, honestly. This person is trying to better themselves and or an aspect of their life. Good job. Mild jealousy. Literally me. I want to be able to do that. Where are the magical hidden funds people have to be able to do it or even just afford health insurance? I do feel like that's an aspect people don't talk about enough is that sometimes for some people, therapy is just unaffordable. Even if they want to do it, they might not be able to. I'm glad people are working on themselves. Court ordered or just for fun? I think you gotta be real careful on telling this to somebody because that could come off very rude. I say, sir, this is a Wendy's. Well, I have an exceptionally bad relationship with therapy, so normally my first thought is something like, why would you spend that much money on someone who probably doesn't really care? Then I realize my experience was different and I support them best I can. Good on you for recognizing like your own personal bias 
bias towards it and letting somebody try it regardless. If you just found the equivalent of $98,100 in cash in the woods, what would you do? I'd probably bring it home and like over the course of like a month, slowly deposit it into my bank to hopefully not raise any questions. I would live the rest of my life stressing over why it wasn't an even 100K. It is a very specific number. Why, why not just 100K? Why, why just round up, please? The fact that it is an amount that specific makes me wonder if you actually did find $98,100 in the woods. Oh yeah, the OP is just asking for real advice, like please, what do I do with this? I'd buy more woods. Clearly, there's a relationship to abandoned money and woods. I'd own all the forest money and you suckers will be left with the squirrels. Your bloodline is weak and you will not survive the winter. I've seen no country for old men. This doesn't end well. Ooh, yep, you do got a good point there. I'd start looking for the other half of DB Cooper's cash. Steal that shit, hide it, spend nothing. Wait for a period of six months. You know, that is actually closer to what my strategy would be. Like, wait it out for a good while, just so, you know, really know it's safe. R slash oddly specific. Check for trail cameras. Cover your tracks. Delete this post. Yeah, you don't want any evidence to be able to track it back to you, so maybe don't ask this question if you did find it. I'd turn in the $50,000, of course. You mean $40,000. I think you mean $10. Anyone lose this dollar in the woods? I mean, at that point, just don't turn in anything, really. I'd go to r slash ask reddit and ask people what they'd do so that I'd have options on what I should do. In your opinion, what is the greatest TV show of all time? Band of Brothers. Either The Wire, Breaking Bad, or The Sopranos, depending on my mood the day you ask me. Okay, what's your mood today? Like, you can't just... We're asking you now. Come on, give me your real answer. Futurama. Monty Python's Fly Circus. Is that a TV show? I thought that was another movie. Battlestar Galactica. I thought I'd hate it when Starbuck was cast as a woman. I was so wrong. Interesting that you thought it would be bad because woman? Uh, weird. Avatar The Last Airbender. Twin Peaks. I really need to start watching Twin Peaks because the aesthetic and the vibe, it just looks so cool. Season 1 through 4 of Game of Thrones. It hurts so bad that season 5 through 8 are just not that good. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. BCS is really that good? It's better than Breaking Bad IMO, and I honestly loved Breaking Bad. It's a much more character-driven story and has much more clever, intricate ways of progressing the plot. If you can get past the aging actors, I'd say it's absolutely worth multiple watches. It is something that's so weird just having the actors being so much older than the characters they're supposed to be playing, but I mean, if it's good, it's good, you know? I'm surprised no one said Mr. Robot. That show is a masterpiece. I do still need to get around to that because a lot of people were raving about that show a good few years ago. People who played video games before the year 2000, what was the most interesting game you encountered in those days? Mecha Warriors 2 was so awesome to see. Very visually cool. Playing Diablo 1 on Battle.net back in the day was wild. Half-Life. Ugh, just a pure classic. Starcraft. First RTS game for me with a rich storyline. Expansions and multiplayer made it viable for 15 plus years. Doom on Windows 95. Bubble Bobble. I'm sure I'd understand it now, but as a child, I did not understand what I was supposed to be doing. Mist. Still need to play this one. I love me a good puzzle game, and people say Mist is awesome for it. I played Ocarina of Time in 1998-99, so probably that. Quake. It's kind of crazy to see such old games still have a lot of attention because there's still like a whole esports category for Quake, I'm pretty sure. Zelda Link to the Past is timeless. GoldenEye 007 on N64. Game Gamers today are so spoiled with FPS games because, God, playing Goldeneye now is a little bit of a chore, but it's still fun. Earthworm Jim. I never managed to beat that game when I was a kid, but I just loved the environment and the weird, creepy aesthetic. What movie could you watch over and over again and already have watched a thousand times and never get bored of it? I think recently I have two of them. It would be Everything Everywhere All at Once and La La Land. The Fifth Element. One of these days I'll get to it. Lord of the Rings. The Princess Bride. Goodfellas. Terminator 2. I need to rewatch Terminator. I, I liked him. Snatch. It's an amazing film. Funny, great soundtrack, and excellent storytelling. Shaun of the Dead. And Hot Fuzz. Any of the Cornetto trilogy, really. The Big Lebowski. Shawshank Redemption. While it is a really good movie, I don't think I can watch it over and over just because it's kind of slow in my opinion. Jurassic Park 1993. I mean, just to watch it for the effects alone is, oh, it's so good for the time. Office Space 
never gets old. Oh brother, where art thou? Groundhog Day. Careful rewatching that movie because you might start feeling like you're in your own Groundhog Day. It's weird. What's your go-to joke to tell someone? Kind of a lazy one, but if somebody asks me to do something, I just say no, right as I'm doing whatever they ask me to do. Whenever I'm asked to tell a joke, I literally forget any joke I ever heard in my life. That one question somehow manages to delete all information in your brain in that moment. You ever notice when geese fly south for the winter in a V pattern? One side of the V is always longer than the other. You know why that is? There's more geese on that side. This is one of my two go-to dad jokes. The other, do you know why scuba divers, when they have all their gear on and are ready to go, sit on the side of the boat and fall backwards into the water? Because if they fell forwards, they'd still be in the boat. I told this joke to a small group on a boat ride on the way to go scuba diving. They looked at me like I was special. Sounds like those other boat goers just don't like fun. What's a pirate's favorite letter? You'd think it'd be R, but his first love be the C. A limbo dancer walks into a bar. Gets disqualified. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. That's, that's, that's cute. I like it. A nurse proctologist pulls a rectal thermometer out of her shirt pocket and thinks to herself, some asshole stole my pen. Oh my god, that, that's actually a good one. That's clever. I like it. What did the fish say when he swam into a wall? Damn. What's red and smells like blue paint? Red paint. What's brown and rhymes with Snoop? Dr. Dre. Okay, now that's clever too. You Now you're thinking with portals. There once was a maid from Belfast who had a magnificent a Not pretty in pink, as you may well think, but was gray, had long ears, and ate grass. There once was a fellow named Mr. Sweeney. His girlfriend was such a great meanie. She had a hatch on her snatch with two locks and a latch. She could only be screwed by Houdini. Very rare you see people making limerick jokes, but I, I like these. These are fun to say. Why did the sperm cross the road? Because I wore the wrong socks today. Ew, gross. What's brown and sticky? A stick. Followed by, what's brown, sticky, and runs round a field? A fence. Never heard that second one. I, I, I give it a B plus. What do you do if you see a spaceman? Park in it, man. There's probably a better way of delivering that, and I did not do it justice. My girlfriend's grandfather always says this one. I was voted the second best looking man while working on the railroad. Everyone else was tied for first. I'm pretty sure I'm dumb because I don't understand it other than like people tied to the railroad maybe? I... What's the difference between a hippo and a zippo? One's real heavy and the other is a little lighter. What everyday item is designed poorly but we all just sort of accept it? Soap pumps. At least the pre-filled ones. The tube always goes right to the middle where there's a divot in the plastic so you aren't out of soap but the soap is just around that divot where the pipe can't reach it. Craft dinner boxes with the push to open tab. I have never seen it work as it's supposed to in the directions. I own the classic Pyrex glass measuring cups in my kitchen. It has a spout yet still spills all over the place when you pour from it. Despite this, it's a very common item to own. Sun visors and cars are the same in all cars and mostly crap. They leave gaps, etc. It's the same in a Bugatti and a Fiat. The easy open Ziploc packaging. And when you open the package, it's below the Ziploc lining and you still have to fold the bag closed. All that ink used on the package and there's no proper line drawn on the bag showing where the Ziploc is located. A dark red line would be nice. Are you reading this, Walmart? The Reddit app. New Reddit just sucks. You're just realizing that now? I feel like someone has yet to nail toaster design perfectly. I think toasters are fine. They're a little too bulky for my taste, but uh, they're, they're normal. Umbrella. Okay, it kind of works to keep you dry, but only if there's no wind at all and the rain is on a dead vertical drop. Otherwise, they turn inside out with the merest gust of wind and only serve to poke people's eyes out on the street. Plus, when you fold them back down, they just drop everywhere. In fairness, many attempts have been made to address that problem, but people won't carry an umbrella if it's heavy or inconvenient. The rise of extending compact umbrellas has exacerbated the situation. Air blow hand dryers in public toilets. As far as I can see, they do next to nothing. Also, playground seesaws. The end result is usually children of different weights angrily arguing. The refrigerator's through-the-door ice dispenser shoots pieces of ice onto the floor, no matter how carefully you hold the glass against the unit.
it. Kids' cups at restaurants. Make the cups wide at the bottom and taper it upwards. Boom. Significantly less spills. Use the idea as you wish. If you get rich, remember me. I like where your head's at, but, you know, we're dealing with children here, and they know how to make messes regardless. The financial system. What are you talking about? Capitalism's great. It's awesome. I love working every day to barely pay my bills. Saucepan handles that get so hot you have to use an oven glove to pick them up. That's where ideally you're not getting metal handle saucepans, but that is kind of hard to find because every company loves to make them metal. If you could go back to any year, which would it be? All right, yeah, easy answer. Go back in time and buy stock in Apple and Bitcoin or whatever. Sophomore year of high school, and I would have bought $20 worth of Bitcoin. Ah, see, there it is. We, we, we got it. 2005. I was still young, and knowing what I know now, I'd make so many different choices in high school. I'd be more outgoing, take more chances, and play things less safe. Plus, I loved the subcultures, music, and movies of that era. Internet still had a bit of a Wild West flair. Everything wasn't owned by, like, three corporations. I was born in 82, so I'm going back to 81 and throwing a brick at my dad's balls. You know what? Gotta give you some points for creativity. I never would have thought of that. Most people's answers I've seen here so far are 2016. That's my answer, too. But it's so f***ing strange that it feels like only four years ago. But no, it's seven f***ing no good years since 2016. I will cry. Honestly don't think I'd pick 2016 just since I was still in high school and that was awful. 2016. Gonna save Harambe. I'm gonna forever stay mad at the Harambe meme because of it. There was a percentage of voters in the United States that voted for Harambe in the presidential election in 2016. The meme went too far. 1999. So I could take a ride to my old neighborhood and sing Hit Me Baby one more time. 1997. I always think it's 97. I joke about it all the time. Maybe I should actually ask why. Probably like 2006 so I can tell my family to invest in a lot of sh Especially before that housing crash. Gotta make sure they buy something. I wouldn't go back in any year. I'm very busy with these times and grateful for a country without war, which was different in the past. I also wouldn't go back in time because my family and boyfriend are too important for my life. I can't go without them in the past. Aw, that's kind of wholesome. 2500 BC. Go visit Egypt. Like, sure, it'd be cool, but you'd also probably be killed wearing modern clothes. None of them. Thanks, but no thanks. What song is playing on repeat in hell. Probably that new Megan Trainer song, like Mother or whatever she called it. Baby Shark. That oh no TikTok song. And it's announced each time by that stupid TikTok voice. The song that doesn't end or the it's a small world ride music at Disneyland. I'm sorry, but all of these comments are incorrect. The song that plays in hell is whatever your absolute favorite song of all time is. They will take something you love and slowly destroy you with it, which would be like kind of a bummer. The Justin Timberlake like Trolls Song, Happy by Pharrell, Anything by the Black Eyed Peas, and Megan Trainer. What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. With the occasional It's Not Unusual sprinkled in. We're on Easy Street, and it feels so sweet. Yummy by Justin Bieber. Oh, I completely forgot about that song, but I can already hear it in my head. Uh, With Arms Wide Open by Creed. Baby Shark, but played in bagpipes. Oh, yeah, you just invented the worst possible audio hallucination for me. Uh, how dare you? All all I want for Christmas is you. Yeah, but I mean, we're already tortured enough up here. I feel like even hell's sick of it. Hey there, Delilah, by the Plain White Tees. I mean, it's not the worst song to hear over and over again. It's literally a country music station. Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas album, on repeat, forever. This feels like it's turning into a I hate Christmas music kind of question. Friday by Rebecca Black. Which seemingly innocent YouTube channel has a dark side most people don't know about? Those restoration channels are mostly fake. Pro tip, if the object they are restoring has a nice, even coating of rust all over it, it means they used bleach to rust it. Honestly, most of those animal rescue channels from places around Asia like Thailand, Vietnam, and the Middle East in general, etc. Basically all of them, many of them being big channels, are just all BS, where they place the animals in predicaments and dangerous situations only to then record themselves saving them, then reuse those same animals in tons of other videos. It sucks because all the comments are usually super supportive too because they believe that shit. 
It's really disgusting seeing those. Blippy, who my son loves, has a video of himself purposefully shitting on his friends, which is still circulating on YouTube, LMAO. Like, like physically or like verbally? I, I need to know the context. Most family-centered channels, Red Letter Media have been outed in several states for voluntary indecent exposure. I heard that some of the children's channels have some weird stuff going on, and it's not good for children's development. Peppa Pig, for instance, some other one I forgot the name of, and Cocomelon. Most amazing top 10. In the span of a year, changed from legit good creepypasta content and true crime to fear-mongering and regurgitating the same BS over and over. I haven't watched any of their post-2020 content in years. 5-Minute Crafts. I feel like 5-Minute Crafts is like violating some kind of law with every video they make. What is the weirdest movie you've ever seen? Oh god, uh, maybe this movie called Freaked? It's got Alex Winter from Bill and Ted, and it's so just weird. Swiss Army Man. Oh, the Daniels just know how to make a weird movie. Eraserhead is so weird and perplexing. Rubber. A movie about a killer tire. Kind of. I chanced upon it late night on cable. It made me uncomfortable, as if something about it wasn't safe in some way. I've seen it again since then, and it's interesting. Brazil. Oh my god, I just pulled up some pictures on Google and ew. Gummo. The Holy Mountain, for sure. Blue Velvet. The Human Centipede. Very weird, but I feel like I'm like desensitized because of how popular that one got. Human Centipede. You people. I expected a comedy. All I got was cringe. Annihilation. I felt high after watching it because it BC the movie as akin to taking psychedelics. Super weird. Not reading the books. I forgot Annihilation was based off a book. I might check it out. What's a non-obvious sign someone is rich? Most of the time, they will stay quiet about money, but never balk when presented with a bill. They will be very selective in those they choose to be friends with, for various legal reasons. They wear very nice clothing without any brand identification. Even if I were a millionaire, I'd still be wearing trashy t-shirts from Hot Topic, okay? In my experience as a waiter in a fine dining establishment, they treat you like a normal f***ing human. Not sure if my boss coined the term, but a 100k millionaire will treat you like you're just the help and make you feel like less of a person. Casually having expensive hobbies. Stuff like sailing, skiing, and golfing. Especially in areas where those activities aren't as accessible and if they've been doing it for a long time. You live in the Midwest, but you've been surfing since you were 10? Probably rich. Hasn't got shit all over him. Must be a king. Real generational wealth keeps an extremely low profile. They have no digital footprint. They actually pay people to keep information about them off the internet and out of any publications. They will keep a low profile, driving cars that blend in. Nice, reliable vehicles, but nothing too flashy. Doesn't bother with the pistachios that are hard to open. I don't know if that's really an indicator of rich. That might just be an indicator of lazy. But they do kind of go together, huh? If their couches don't touch the wall. My couches don't touch the wall, but it's because I have a weird living room layout. They are quiet when the discussion is about cost of living pressures and will deflect the questions from themselves and or nudge the conversation into a different direction. Went to a good university, but is kind of dumb. Ah, so they didn't go to their classes. Never talks about money. Isn't crying. Admittedly, I will say rich people can be sad and cry too, but they also have the money to make it better, so it's a little different. What do you hate the most about Reddit? I love Reddit, but it's an echo chamber. Everyone has the same opinions on everything, and you don't get to see unique takes on any subject because they get downvoted to hell. When someone who is an expert on something says something completely correct and gets downvoted. Doesn't matter if you're a doctor or like a master in your field, you're not smart enough to know what you're talking about. Karma. Some of the mods are very arbitrary. Make an opinion about trivial sh** and the hate that ensues because other people don't know how to accept different views and just be able to disagree. Group think. Downvoting and upvoting. Plus the downvote was originally for things that don't contribute to the thread, but now it is a measure of popular opinion. As most other social media websites do. Redditors. The redundant questions. Admittedly, there are a lot of questions that are very samey. The stupidity, the ignorance, the immaturity. Well, you're already in the wrong spot looking for maturity on any social media website, because you're not going to find it. Everyone on here is so bitter and spiteful about everything. I get that places like Reddit attract those kinds of people, but seriously, lighten up. Constant hate towards religion. Not any one in particular, but religion as a whole. Yet Reddit rules say don't demean or insult specific groups. It would be nicer if we could all just not hate each other for like five minutes. What is the best comeback that works
works against all insults. Anytime my mom would get called names or insulted, she shrugged and just say, everybody's gotta be something. Once I saw a AITA post where a bride was jealous of a guest because she was too beautiful and stole her day, even if she was perfectly elegant, and she was insulting her. The bride told her, so next time can I come to your wedding in a wedding gown? The guest replied, if you think it'll help, and I found that epic. I bet that sounded a lot cooler in your head. That sounds like something you would say. Well, I guess what everyone says about you is true. My dad told me to say this, and the typical bully type will generally go crazy thinking everyone talks about them behind their back. Pull my earbuds out with a confused expression and ask, what? I found out just asking why and putting them in a position to explain their insult, which didn't have much thought behind it, works well. Earnestly ask them if they are okay, and basically takes all the wind out of their sails. They want to get a rise out of you and responding like this doesn't give them the satisfaction. Big fan of the pause for a beat, deadpan, and then some variation slash combo of you done? Feel better now? Got that one out of your system? Just that pause and a little bit of patronizing tone while dismissing the childlike behavior usually does more to the ego than a counter insult. What's the best response to, ha <laughs> you have small boobs? What a loser thing to say to anyone. Is small boobs still an insult these days? All boobs are good. At least I don't have to wear a bra, Dave. This works especially well if the commenter's name isn't Dave. A flat girl holds you closer to her heart. I guess that's wholesome-ish. Yeah, but my dick is huge. Perfect response, regardless of gender. Whenever someone tries insulting me like that, I just say, Thanks! Thanks! I grew them myself. I'll take my small tits over your dim wits any day. Poetic. I really like the creativity on this one. This, this is fun. Actually, I have no boobs. Pulls out breast prosthetics. Thanks, cancer. A bit inconvenient that you have to get cancer for this one, though. LOL. First of all, brush your teeth. That'll get anybody self-conscious, and they won't want to speak to anyone for a good while. If it's from a guy, <laughs> you have huge ones. If it's a girl, you're just mad yours hang weird. Bigger than your brain, though. That's not even an insult. Small boobs rock. That is true. I've heard people with larger breasts usually don't like having them because of back problems. People who eat pizza with knife and fork, why? To slow me down. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but still, eh. Typically, I'd do it because I'm working at my PC and don't want to have to wipe my hands off every time I need to type something. I guess that's another fair point. One must always distinguish themselves from the peasants. Okay, weirdo, uh, have fun eating your pizza with fork and knife. I'm gonna slop down some za real quick. Depends on the pizza. If it's thick and unwieldy, absolutely laden with toppings, I might reach for a fork. But if it's a standard slice, I'm picking it up. You know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. Like, if it's too much toppings and stuff's just spilling off, you probably need to eat it with a fork. I want it right now, and if I bite into it when it's too hot, the cheese will slap itself onto my chin and I'll scream. I like my hands to avoid getting sticky and food it up if I can. Right here. Hate greasy hands. All right, now I might be agreeing with fork and knife people because I do hate getting grease all over my hands. I don't have a single freaking tooth left in my head. Just about anything I eat requires a sharp knife. Mainly, it forces me to slow down and appreciate the pizza instead of just shoving it in. Also, it makes eating pizza more of a sensory experience. I can feel and hear how crunchy or thick the crust is by cutting into it. I can tell how much sauce is on it by how much I have to spoon it up after cutting. I can also see how stringy the cheese is by having to twirl it around my fork. Okay, I do see your point, but you're very food critic-y and, like, pretentious about it. You ever tried to lift a slab of deep dish to your face? Uh, no. No, I don't think I actually have, ever. And I don't think I want to. That's the normal way of eating a traditional Italian pizza. Is it? That, that feels weird to me. I don't know why. What movie has the greatest opening of all time? Contact. Starting at Earth, then panning out of the solar system, then the galaxy, then out to the edge of the universe, all while listening to older and older radio transmissions. Genius! Children of Men's opening scene is definitely up there. Scream 1996. I was startled. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Had to look it up and it is Goodfellas, and yeah, that's actually a really solid opening. Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan lost Best Picture at the Academy to Shakespeare in Love. Think about that. I mean, if we're being fair, does the Academy really know what they're doing? 
doing? The Matrix. Screenwriter guy. We're gonna start the movie with some cops trying to arrest this lady, Trinity, and she's gonna kick all their butts. Producer guy. How is she gonna do that? Screenwriter guy. In such a way that movies are gonna try to imitate for a full decade. See, when you just try and make a cool thing, other people will see that cool thing and want to copy it. Raiders of the Lost Ark. No contest. It's movie magic defined. I mean, come on. Everybody knows the boulder scene. That's how good it is. Office space. When he looks over and notices that the old man with the walker has gone further than he has in his car. The Godfather. That opening scene with Brando. The cat. The music. Just perfection. Lion King. Using that opening as the movie's official trailer was absolutely brilliant. When that trailer dropped, it was an event. Every kid was counting down the days for when it came out. We all knew that movie was going to be life-changing. 2004's Dawn of the Dead. Pure horror cinema right there. What was your worst slash weirdest experience at somebody else's house? Went to a friend's house. We came in and somebody started yelling and swearing at him from another room. For no reason and impromptu. Scary, threatening, and abusive sounding. It was his dad and the dad didn't realize I was there. The kid was cool about it. Just kind of, maybe we should just go for a walk. It was how cool the kid was that unnerved me. Just his day to day. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a bummer getting a window into somebody's life like that. In college, I went to this girl's house during a free period with six or seven friends. We arrive and she opens the door, says hello to her father, and immediately strips down to her bra and panties in the living room. We spent 45 minutes hanging out with her and her dad, and the whole time she's walking around in basically nothing. I asked her dad about it at a different time, and he nonchalantly says she's always done this and acted like it was a completely normal thing to do. Also, bonus points for her goth friend who sat there playing with a knife the whole time. I would be out of there so quickly, just the uncomfortable vibe I get from that is no good. Stayed at my friend's house one time and found out her family only uses red light bulbs in their house because an astrologer told them to do so. Definitely strange, but I understand the want to do that because I think regular yellow or white light bulbs do kind of give off a lot more light pollution. But at the same time, you're at your house, you're not in a dark zone, so... uh. At someone's birthday party at her house, she divided us into groups and made us write songs about her. Ugh, please tell me this was like a child's birthday and not like an adult's birthday because, ooh, that narcissism runs deep. When I was a kid, I went over to a friend's house. At some point, they went to have dinner. They, meaning the whole family. I wasn't at any point asked to join them. So while they ate, I sat in the living room and played on their Atari. I mean, I guess the upside, you got to play with the Atari. Well, my late wife's clinically psychotic brother pulled a gun on me for no reason at Thanksgiving one year. Also, her parents were trash people. When I was around 12, I was over a friend's house playing some video games in her basement. I guess her 10-year-old brother was mad he couldn't play because she had guests, so he walked into the basement naked to scare us out. Honestly, kind of respect to the little brother there. That's a strategy I never would have thought of. When I was 8, I slept over a friend's house. For dinner, they had pancakes. Everyone ate together. After I put the syrup on my pancakes, I was scolded by the dad for using too much syrup. I then noticed everyone at the table only put a tablespoon on their pancakes. After I ate the pancakes, they took my plate and tried to pour the unused syrup back into the container. I think that's being like a little too stingy, don't you think? One time I went to a sleepover when I was 12 and the mom was there the whole time. I don't just mean in the house doing her own thing. I mean she had a sleeping bag out on the living room floor with all of us. Most awkward sleepover I've ever been to. Worst part is the girl didn't even think it was weird. Also, we have to go to bed at 8, so there's that. I'll never understand being a helicopter parent. Like, just let your child be a child sometimes, you know? Met a nice couple at work, and they invited me and my fiancé at the time for dinner. The dinner was typical, but two more couples showed up as it ended, and they wanted us to stick around for other activities. Apparently, they thought the way to convince us to join their swingers group was to sneak up on us with it. We politely declined. I think the number one rule with anything in the sexual realm is clear-cut communication. You don't sneak up on somebody and blindside them to make them bang you? Uh, First time my high school GF took me to her house, her dad didn't know I was there. When I was trying to sneak out later that night, we ran into each other in the kitchen while he was in his underwear and he pissed himself. Relationship lasted for like three years after that, but I never was able to get on great terms with her dad. Yeah, after seeing a man pee himself, I don't think you'll ever be on good terms. What has caused you to become bitter? If I'm being honest, Too many things to list. Being with my company for eight years, then finding out new people that I train 
seemed make more than me. Attempting to stay in contact with friends and then realizing they wouldn't do the same for you once you stop. It's always a rough pill to swallow. Working retail at any corporate store. I started out a young man, loving meeting new people and talking to them. After months of daily verbal abuse by shoppers and no backup from your bosses, you just assume everybody is a giant c*** and become bitter. Expectations. I had these expectations about how life was supposed to go, how I was supposed to be. Life didn't work out that way. And I know it was my own doing by having those expectations, but I'm still bitter about it. Working in healthcare. Oh god, I, I respect the hell out of any healthcare worker, especially in the past few years because of how, you know, people weren't listening to them. Aging and realizing that good, kind people suffer and die far more often than the heads of the world. Seeing too many bad things happen to people who are too good for this. Also seeing too many people get away with really bad things. And others not even seeking to get a chance for something good. After realizing that hard work is not fairly rewarded, someone else who is lazier and or less competent can get something that you wanted slash deserved and there's nothing you can do about it. Gotta love that free and fair market people keep talking about. It's, it's so fair and so awesome. Showing kindness and in turn being treated like a stepping stone for someone's ego. Realizing my childhood trauma left me unable to form meaningful relationships and now I have to invest a f ton of money and time to maybe achieve some sort of progress and peace. I envy people who grew up with loving parents and have the confidence to choose good friends, partners, and look at life with hope. Working full time and interacting with the general public. People are freaking stupid, man. If you want to learn just how dumb the common person is, go work a fast food job. You will hear some of the dumbest things possible. What song over 8 minutes long is a 10 out of 10? I don't listen to many long songs because uh, my attention span is just destroyed. Echoes, Pink Floyd, right in 2. I do hear Tool is really good, I just, I haven't gotten around. The answer I always give for these questions, Rhapsody in Blue, yes, Roundabout. Is that a JoJo reference? Disintegration by The Cure. Albuquerque by Weird Al. Chloe Dancer slash Crown of Thorns, Mother Love Bone, The Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. Is that another JoJo reference? Maggot Brain by Funkadelic. I'm sorry, what did you call me? David Bowie, Station to Station. What sucks when you get married? Ideally, your wife. <laughs> your spouse's family problems become yours. Don't worry, you still have your own family problems too. Having to deal with in-laws who don't play nice with others. Gotta love those family gatherings. Not being on the same level of dishwasher organization? Oddly, I understand this 100% and oh god, a new fear is unlocked. Having to decide what to eat every night for the rest of your life while trying to accommodate the other. Or, if you're normal people, you can choose to eat what you want. Restaurant leftovers not still being in the fridge where you left them. I've been married 29 years and I absolutely adore my wife, but sometimes the compromises aren't great. We do it out of love and devotion, but once in a while it sucks. Anything from going to family gatherings, to what to watch on TV, to home decorating. We each have our own hobbies and interests, so compromise is essential to a good marriage. If you're young, having all the extended family bug you about when you're going to have kids. People just seem to forget that other people might not want to have kids? What's the best thing about being single? Personally, I'm starting to forget the good aspects. I can eat whatever I want for dinner. I don't have to consider anyone else's opinions. I can plan out whatever I want. You can leave family functions on your own terms. Peace and quiet. Sounds like you've just had bad partners before. Loads of things. Mostly around being able to act exclusively for your own betterment without having to consider anyone else. I think this is good advice, but also it just comes off really selfish. I don't know why. That you can do whatever TF you want without having to answer to anyone. Of all the perks, I think the best one has to be getting the bed all to myself. I'm not even in a relationship, but I don't even get that. Mostly because my dog likes to lay uh, horizontal and just take up the entire space. Not living in fear that my relationship will fall apart. Knowing exactly what to expect when you come home and open the front door. Unless you live with roommates because that's, I don't know, sharing a space. Not having to check in with anyone. The absolute freedom. Not being a slave to someone else's emotional state. This really just makes it sound like you've never loved a partner. What is your view on construction workers taking a dump in your bathroom while they're on the job in your house? Uh, who cares? It's a toilet people need to go. Why, why does it matter? Better than them doing it in one of the other rooms, that's for sure. That's what the bathroom is for. Where
where the hell else are they gonna go? As long as they flush, obviously they can. As a lifelong construction worker, I assure you that's the last thing any of us want to do, and we'll do just about anything to avoid it. Oh, is that the case? Then I better see some diapers when you're coming into my house, okay, mister? What kind of question is this? Should I tell them they need to sh** in the backyard with my dog? Obviously, if they need to go, they should use the bathroom. As long as I can be part of the turbo team, I'm cool with it. I'm so- uh, uh, the what now? What kind of entitled scumbag would forbid tradesmen from using the restroom? Unfortunately, I can think of quite a few people. Oh, yuck! What's next? Peeing at the office? Lunch breaks? Honestly, you'd think these blue collars were people or something. That's where people in my house take a dump. I would sure hope so. If they ask, I will always say yes. Now that brings an interesting angle to it. If they don't ask, that's where it's like a little rude of them, but it's still a bathroom. Just go when you need, you know? Unless the company supplies a porta potty for the workers, like for a long-term job, it would be bizarre to deny them restroom privileges. Why not? If they're working to improve your home, treat them with hospitality. Offer sandwiches, cookies, and cold water, too. Are they unworthy to sh** in your sh** I only let A5 grade Wagyu poops that land perfectly in the middle of the bowl to grace my toilet. Would you rather they squat in your yard? No, the neighbor's yard. How do you work 40 plus hours per week without dying? You see, now that's the secret. Uh, most people are dead. When you have work that involves thinking, the time goes by pretty fast. By eating, drinking, sleeping, and not getting hit by a bus on the way to work. That'll definitely keep you alive for sure. Not hating your job helps. Now finding a job you don't hate, that's the hard part. I need money. It drives me. No, your car does, unless you don't have a car. Because not working 40 plus hours per week results in actual dying. Or at the very least homelessness, but that does get you pretty close to the dying part too. I just retired last week. My SS statement shows that I began working in 1975. Most of those weeks were 40 plus. IDK how I did it. Good luck. Maybe it's just that indomitable human spirit that keeps you going, you know? Working from home was something I enjoy. Spite. That's what keeps me alive most days. Just keep doing it. And next thing you know, 30 to 40 years have gone by. And then you drop dead when you stop. You see, when I hear something like that, that does not give me hope for the future. Bold of you to assume I'm not already dead on the inside. Don't cry for me. I'm already dead. I did college plus 40 plus work for three years, then 65 to 70 plus on call 24-7 for about 10 years. I can say with experience, that absolutely f*** that. It's just not worth the money to give up that much of your free time and your life. Exercise and eat well. I mean, I guess I'll try. What seems harmless but is actually incredibly dangerous? Having a loose animal in the car. A safety instructor once told me doctors had to dig dog bones out of a person after it got between them and an airbag. Oh, that's terrible. That's awful. I didn't want to read that. Pool covers. It's like being wrapped in a bed sheet underwater. You can't get free and you cannot scream for help. Once you're in, the only way to get out is to be incredibly lucky and get free or have faith that someone saw or heard you fall in and hope that they get you in time. It's a lengthy, terrifying death that's completely avoidable. Putting your feet on car dashboard. I guess in the event of a car accident, then yeah, it could be very dangerous. A patch of calm, smooth ocean before sections that look rough. It's for weird events like that that make the ocean terrifying to me, that it can be so evenly still and calm and then just kill you. Tired driving is as dangerous as drinking and driving. Uh, yes, I have experienced driving being awake for 26 hours and it's not safe. Not getting enough sleep. I think there's something to do if you don't get sleep your brain doesn't get to like process information or like reset itself so it kind of just sets you up for bad things overall. Colorful and pretty wildlife you're unfamiliar with. If you wouldn't eat a berry you're unfamiliar with, why would you pick up an animal you're unfamiliar with. Moose. I already don't really like horses just uh, in general, so anything about the size of a horse or bigger terrifies me. Pushing someone's face into a cake, even relatively lightly. Some cakes have skewers inside to support them. A seemingly harmless prank could lead to being impaled. Approach it from just the wrong angle and it's bye-bye eye. Bison. Just go to Yellowstone, grab some popcorn, find a tourist route and watch. You'll see. Water on the roadway. Way too many people don't understand that it does not take that much water to turn your situation into life or death. The atheism leaving my body as my car starts to hydroplane. Which sitcom character was the worst human being ever? Frank or Dennis on Always Sunny. I love the character
characters, but they are worst in a group of terrible people. Mona Lisa Saperstein from Parks and Rec. She's the worst. The worst in the world. Source? Her brother, Jean Ralphio. I can't think of anybody worse than Eric Cartman. I mean, he literally fed a kid his own parents. I, that's like gotta be crossing some line, right? Jay's dad from The Inbetweeners. Bojack Horseman is a grade A hole, but that's kind of the point. Peter Griffin is genuinely a terrible person, and I'm convinced his exploits are supported by Lois' parents secretly giving them loads of money. Or maybe, hang on, hear, hear me out here, it's a, it's a cartoon? It's a cartoon? Pierce Hawthorne. No additional comments. None needed. Mallory Archer. She was a terrible mother and straight up horrible boss. Not to mention greedy AF and self-centered. Nobody in the show is a good person. LOL. But I think she's the worst. Marie in Everyone Loves Raymond. I've always said that with a few small cuts, a musical change here and there, and the complete removal of the laugh track, and you could turn that show into a terrifyingly accurate psychological horror story about what it's like living in a family ruled by a malignant narcissist. I've enjoyed hating characters in shows before, but sweet Jesus, that character makes my skin crawl. Lucille Bluth from Arrested Development. She's great. Terrible person, but oh god, love her. Malcolm from Malcolm in the Middle. Dude tried to go one week without being an a-hole, and it went so against his nature, he started coughing blood. I loved that little sh Obscure one for you Aussies, but Mike Moore on Frontline. Seeing as I'm not Australian and Australia doesn't exist, I don't know what this is talking about. Frank Gallagher. Okay, but like, Terry Malkovich is arguably a lot worse than Frank. In certain respects, yeah, but ultimately Frank is the biggest deadbeat around. Estelle Costanza. She put bananas in jello. They should be eaten on the side. Lois's mother from Malcolm in the Middle. Cloris Leachman nailed that role. Millennials, what skill did you acquire in the 90s that you no longer use? Texting using T9. I was so good. I could carry on verbal conversations with my parents without looking at what I was texting. I wish I had some other skill that would have aged better. Memorizing phone numbers. Now everyone just saves contacts on their phone. I think I still have a few phone numbers still locked in my head, but not enough to matter. Memorizing the TV channel so I knew what to look for on the TV Guide channel. Ever since I moved out of my parents' house, I have not had cable, so I do not remember TV channels. Dumping ashtrays for grandma. Making ashtrays at school to take home to your family. Family. Weird times those 90s were, huh? Burning CDs. I was the first one in my class who learned how to do it and had a computer capable of doing it. Oh, what a brief and shining moment of popularity. If you could burn CDs and use LimeWire, you were like a king in school. Using word art and clip art to make documents more visually interesting. That's true. I think I even had like a whole day in my computer lab where we learned how to do word art and it's just not used ever again. Was really good at that ski game where the Yeti eats you eventually. Ski free. God bless these answers. I completely forgot the name of that game and I've been wanting to play it for a long time. Walking carefully while I listen to music so that the broken headphone cable won't disconnect. I was so good at making those little bead animals out of pony beads. The amount of lizards that I made was stunning. Using a pencil to roll the tape back into the cassette after it got chewed up by the effing pinch roller. Buffing the scratches out of CDs was a skill that served me well for a very limited time. Time. Toothpaste was a lifesaver. I never tried the toothpaste trick because I thought people were just trying to trick me. How to smack the pogs with the slammer just right. How to keep my Tamagotchi alive. Probably a good thing I never had a Tamagotchi. I, I was not great with taking care of things as a child. Learning how to program the VCR to start and stop recording a show at a predetermined time. What software is so good you can't believe it's free? GPS. A godsend to drivers like me that can't can't figure out maps. I could probably figure out a map, but it's so much more convenient. VLC. The heavyweight champion has entered the ring. Da Vinci Resolve. There's a paid version, but the free version is ridiculously good. If you're looking for tools to start making YouTube videos of your own, Da Vinci is a really solid free program. There's so many features to it. it it's awesome. I was always impressed by how easy to use and versatile Paint.net is. Notepad++. Audacity. It's so simple and is enough to handle any audio projects I will ever work on. Fun fact, I'm using it right now. OBS Studio. The amount of power it has and the amount of people who built their careers off of it. Absolutely insane that we have this now. Zotero for in-text citations and making a reference list. Saved me in university. Draw.io is
is better than every paid diagramming slash flowchart tool I've ever used. This just goes to show you sometimes the things that are more expensive are worse. What do you consider a holy trinity? Phone, keys, wallet. Never leave the house without them. Salt, pepper, and garlic. Some good basic seasonings that'll they'll spice up your food. Aperture, shutter, ISO. Power, wisdom, courage. The holy trinity of the Triforce. Anxiety, depression, mania. The unholy trinity. Bob Ross, Steve Irwin, and Mr. Rogers. Bob Ross, love yourself. Steve Irwin, love nature. Mr. Rogers, love your neighbor. Lord of the Rings 1, Lord of the Rings 2, Lord of the Rings 3. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. The holy potato trinity. The holy shrinity. <laughs> Shave shower. What was the most effed up thing you saw at your school? Someone used a deer carcass to tie the front doors together so no one could get into the school. Oh dear. I mean, that's dedication and possible signs of psychopathy? The ambulance in front of the school because two guys glued their eyelids shut with a quick dry adhesive. You know, you'd think it would be unbelievable somebody would do this, but I did go to school with a few people who super glued things to themselves, so it's possible. Back in third grade, 1997, a classmate of mine was acting out. I'm not sure if our teacher was in a bad mood or this was accepted behavior back in the day, but he made the troubled student come up to the front of the classroom. He then grabbed this kid by neck, pinned him against the wall, and proceeded to lift him up off the ground as high as he could. I don't remember exactly what was said, but I do remember our teacher saying, I could kill you if I wanted to, but not today, as he dropped him. I mean, that's not accepted behavior today, so I really hope it wasn't accepted back then. A new kid at our school grabbed the art teacher's scissors and threw them over a dividing wall when the teacher left the room. They hit some girl in a different art class on the other side and one of the blades went through her cheek. We were held after class until he finally confessed, and we saw the police at the school later. He had been at our school for about a week, and we never saw him again after that day. Oh my god, I, I hope that little girl was okay. Some dude threw a chair in the head of another student, then beat the living shit out of him. Also, some guy got a concussion because someone threw a kiwi fruit and he got hit in the head. I'm sorry, you got a concussion from a kiwi? How hard are they? I thought they were like soft and mushy. The EMT is wheeling out the Spanish teacher after she had died in the girl's bathroom of a heart attack. That'll definitely uh, change the course of your life, I'm sure. A jeep ended up in the swimming pool. The student crashed through the wall during lunch. Rumors about DUI flew, but never did find out exactly what happened. Some guy in college sat in front of me in a studio. We were on stools, so there was no back to the chair. He had his phone in his back pocket, screen facing out with rough p playing on his phone. He had his headphones on. I wasn't the only one who noticed it, but I certainly didn't want to break the silence by telling him. Why would he be playing that? Like, was he listening to an audiobook? Audio porn? <laughs> we had a teammate drop dead mid-run during basketball practice in eighth grade. It turned out he had an undiagnosed heart defect and he just had a sudden heart attack with no warnings. Oh, yeah, that's, that's awful. So glad I learned that. There was a kid I knew. I don't know how or why or if it was his dad's or grandpa, but the f***er brought a grenade to school to show me. It was when we were leaving school, guy just opens his backpack and lets me take a look and sure enough, it was there. I guess good on him for not taking it out during school, but still not cool to have that at school. In grade two, my teacher made all students step on a child as they walked into class because he left his lunchbox on the steps in front of the class. This child was mixed race and this was in the 80s and in apartheid South Africa. Those who refused got hit with a cane for not listening to their teacher. Supremely messed up and I will never forget it. She was fired a year or two later for various messed up things. What song makes you feel like an unstoppable badass every time you listen to it? Mike Gordon, Doom. The only thing they fear is you. I'll make a man out of you from Mulan. No shame. This is on my running playlist. I mean, you're lying to yourself if you don't think that song is like just a great pump up song. The Ultimate Warrior's entrance music. Pretty sure I could have personally captured Saddam if I had that on repeat. Sabotage by Beastie Boys. Till I Collapse by Eminem. Invincible by Tool. Barracuda. Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. When I listen to it, I really am having such a good time. All My Life by Foo Fighters. Uprising by Muse. For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica. I mean, of course anything metal's gonna make you feel bad at. What are some really dangerous things most people don't realize are dangerous? A few inches of moving water over a roadway. A lot of people end up with liver failure from overusing Tylenol. It's not harmless. Don't treat it like Skittles. Garage door springs. A full force punch to the face. People have 
died from a single punch. <laughs> it, it's it's like that, that show, you, you know, like <laughs> like a uh, one punch. That one. <laughs> Eating grapefruit while on medication. Grapefruit has so many bad interactions with medication, ranging from rendering the medication ineffective to toxicity. Walking up or down the stairs. The most common accident at home is falling down the stairs. Putting your feet on the dashboard. It is extremely dangerous. Sitting all day. You need to keep your mouth shut, HQer. <laughs> Don't call me out like this. What's a sign of childhood trauma? Always saying sorry. Feeling guilty for speaking up. Finding someone perfect for you and then systematically sabotaging it. Hyper independence. Can't be let down if you never ask for anything in the first place. Difficulty making relationships, fears of being judged, and low self-esteem. Over explaining. Unable to forgive themselves for small mistakes. Hyper vigilance. I am always scared that people are mad at me. Always. What is a telltale sign that someone is a selfish person? Doesn't think they're wrong in the slightest bit. They can't shoulder any bit of responsibility. They respond how worse their situation is when you're sharing problems with them. No try for help or listening, just trying to draw attention on their side. If they always talk about themselves, they bring nothing Nothing to the potluck, but are first in line. For me, it's people who listen to loud TikTok in public, especially in relatively silent places. They don't remember the times people helped them, but remember clearly all the times that they've helped others. Complaining at work to coworkers doing your work for you while you complain. They feel no remorse for how they've hurt others. How is everyone feeling about Donald Trump officially being under arrest? When I tell you I'm throwing a party, I'm throwing a goddamn party. <laughs> that guy from Home Alone too? Wow, just goes to show you can really never tell. Great. Now let's start going after all politicians and other government officials. So real. There's there's a lot of politicians on both sides of the coin that need to be behind bars. <laughs> this is not a solely Republican issue. There are some freaking messed up Democrats out there, man. Annoyed Donald Trump is back in the news. Nobody is above the law. That's what we are told, and now it's time to prove it. I'm pretty sure my parents are livid and probably think I'm behind it somehow. You're right, hopeful underscore relative underscore 494. Somehow, this is your fault. It's a good appetizer, but I want a full course meal. His arrest is pretty meaningless. He'll either delay forever or plead out and pay some minor fines. Fine. Nobody should be above the law. Would you vote for Jon Stewart if he ran for president? If so, why? If so, why not? This is the premise of Man of the Year 2006, starring Robin Williams. Let the man help animals on his sanctuary in peace. No. Because I live in Brazil. Why not? Having a Green Lantern as a president would be pretty swell. No. Can we all be done voting for celebrities? Idiocracy was supposed to be satire, not a prophecy. All I'm saying is, if I remember correctly, two celebrities have been elected president. Which side voted for both of them? Ah, it's probably nothing. Reddit is insane. No, he's a comedian. Stop voting based on personality. What's the hardest would you rather question you've ever been asked? Personally, my favorite and hardest is would you rather have unlimited bacon but no more video games? Or would you rather have games? Unlimited games, but no games. To this day, I still can't figure it out. Would you rather have a horizontal butt crack or a vertical mouth? Ugh, I don't know. That is a really hard one. I, I would probably pick horizontal butt crack because then I can just sit in chairs sideways. No, I can't. Shoot, I don't know. Would you rather have the ability to effortlessly run at 100 miles per hour or fly at 10? Fly at 10, probably, because, like, unless I'm burning calories like a, out the wazoo running at 100 miles per hour, because I could be pulled over for speeding on any major highway, you know? <laughs> so, I'd probably fly. Would you rather never enjoy music again or never enjoy food again? I'd rather never enjoy food again. I don't think that's a hard one for me, because music I need. Food is just kind of a luxury a lot of the time, so if, like, I had to just drink Soylent for the rest of my life versus never listen to music ever again, then I'd take that. Would you rather be constantly sticky all over your entire body forever or constantly itchy all over your entire body forever? I simply cannot choose. I cannot choose and I will not choose. A nipple-sized dick or dick-sized nipples. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I could pick dick-sized nipples and then I could just cut the nipples off. I don't know. Would you rather have legs as long as your fingers or fingers as long as your legs? These are terrible. Would you rather poop a pineapple or pee a grape? Okay, so so, pooping a pineapple, first of all, both of them are too big for the intestine they're coming out of, or for the for the orifice they're coming out of. That being said, one of them is just round, and the other one is spiky. So, I'm gonna go with pee a grape, no matter how much it hurts. Had someone at a rave ask, would you rather give the first 90% of a black job, or the last 10%? I feel like as a, as a straight man, um, I can't answer this question properly without seeming like a not straight man. The last 10%, probably. <laughs> What's the first sign that a movie is gonna be bad if it has Dwayne the Rock Johnson in it. <laughs> 
kidding, of course. Kinda. Characters that think they're funny because they speak loudly. If there are multiple trailers for a comedy movie, but they use the same joke in all of them. It's a remake of something that didn't suck. It's advertised as one of the best movies of the year, and it's late January. When it's a comedy and the main character is a legendary actor playing a dad or grandpa. If you've ever walked out of a cinema because the film was so bad, what one was it? I left Frozen when I was 11 because I was scared. I don't know if I've ever seen Frozen, so I wouldn't know what scene would have caused that. I couldn't watch E.T. because that alien dude gave me nightmares. That alien dude, you mean E.T. <laughs> I walked out of 28 Days Later, not because it was bad. I was nine years old and snuck in and it was freaking me the hell out. Watched it years later and enjoyed it. Epic movie. Wasn't epic at all. I literally walk out of the cinema every time I see a movie. Green Lantern. Even Ryan Reynolds acknowledges how bad it is. Pacific Rim Uprising. Worst sequel ever made. Downsizing. That horrible movie with Matt Damon. I was actually speechless at how bad it was. Ladies, what would you do if you went home with a guy and he had a race car bed? He's going the distance. He's going for speed. We're definitely using protection. At the very least, a helmet and a five-point harness. Dude, your bed is a car. Yeah, but it's a freaking sweet car, grandma's boy. Call shotgun. You went home with Millhouse's dad? Ugh. Once I went home with a guy and all he had was a hammock. A hammock? Propose to him. Marry him. Divorce him. Take race car bed and live happily ever after. Excitedly say, Kerchow! What was discontinued, but you miss like hell and you wish came back? The dollar menu at every fast food joint. Pizza Hut lunch buffets. 90s Nickelodeon. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Are you afraid of the dark? Double Dare. Pete and Pete, etc. The Blue Raspberry Sour Skittle. They act like it never existed, but I know better. The YouTube dislike button. This is corporate cowardice. Guys, hit the like button if you wish the dislike button was back. McDonald's snack wraps. If McDonald's doesn't bring this back in the next year or two, I'm going to be actually dumbfoundedly surprised. Because good lord, that was like my go-to order. I would go to McDonald's every day if they brought this back and got and get snack wraps. I would get two snack wraps. I would do the grilled chicken, the barbecue one. I don't really like iceberg lettuce, so I would probably get it without that. Maybe carry some spinach in my car to add it in or something. Good lanta, I want those back. The optimism of the 1990s. Good quality products that are designed to last. What's something that changed and disappeared because of COVID that still hasn't returned. My sense of time is messed up, like if I skip three years of my life. We are experiencing higher than normal call volume. The wait time at your local emergency department is four hours and 53 minutes. Are you sure you need to be here? House prices seem like they'll be forever unattainable now. That's all I want to do in life is buy a house, man. If I could buy a house, I would die happy. Me giving a crap about my career. I'm a public high school teacher and students' attention spans are still very short relative to before. 24-hour stores and restaurants. They are probably way less than half as they are used to be. Yeah, my local Walmart used to be 24 hours before COVID and has not changed back yet, but my local IHOP is 24-7 again. Will I ever go? Probably not. <laughs> People's patience. My business of 17 years. I'm still working on getting over it. I had no idea that I would grieve it. Men have read it. What's the best response to, haha, you have a small pant? I'm late to this, but I had a friend from South Texas that always said, yeah, but it's cute and I grew it myself. That's the best answer. Thanks, I got it half off. Hey, my eyes are up here. I was in the pool. You want the money or not? Bro. It's not much, but it's honest work. Who told you? Your sister or your mom? Only when I look at you. What weird flex are you proud of? I have a sock drawer that's 72 of the same exact sock. I never have to fold them or dig around to make a matching pair. I got my braces off seven years ago and I've worn my retainer every night since. I have hugged a penguin. I got spit on by a walrus once. Went to the dentist for the first time in five years last week for a cleaning and checkup. No cavities. When I was a little kid, multiple doctors said I would never be able to speak and that I would need assisted living for the rest of my life. Now I'm 16 and capable of taking care of myself and when I'm able to speak perfectly fine other than a slight stutter when I get really anxious. I've planted over 2 million trees. I built and installed a bookshelf doorway with a hidden door handle myself. It leads into a room dedicated only to Dungeons and Dragons. Childhood dream achieved. Oh my god, please let me have this. I want that so bad. If I had my own house, I, uh, if I had my own house, I would literally do that. I would be able to host D&D every week for me and my bros. I just need a house. Hey guys, if every single one watching this video donated a dollar or maybe even like five dollars to the Give Says Mason a House Foundation, uh, I could buy a house. So consider that. That being said, <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not asking for money on an Ask MK video. I got a pity pat from Obama. This was ages ago when he was just still a senator from Illinois. I got a job at a local radio station as a reporter for News in the area. Obama was speaking at a community college in our area, and I was told to listen to his address and ask relevant questions afterwards. I had never done that before or since, and I barely listened, and at the end, he met with the press, which 
which was me and a local newspaper guy. After he finished with the other guy, he looks at me and says, what can I do for you? My mind totally went blank and I just stood there staring at him. This went on for a little too long and eventually he reaches out a hand, pats me gently on the shoulder and goes, it's okay. And then walked off. Lol. Bro, you fumbled. You fumbled the bag. What was the biggest lie you believed? I had dumped some gasoline in an Arizona tea bottle to get a fire started. My sister seen me pouring on a fire and she freaking thought Arizona iced tea was flammable. I went along with it saying, yeah, you didn't know that? That's why it's called Arizona because how hot it gets there. She was 20 years old. Around five years later, we are camping and she says, who's got some Arizona? I can use it to start this campfire. And I looked at her and didn't understand. She explained I told her it's flammable and I had no recollection. She says she has been telling everyone for the last five years how bad it is for you and how flammable it is. If Arizona iced tea is bad for you and flammable, I'm dying instantly because I can drink Arizona iced tea like it's water. Not a sponsor, of course. Unless Arizona hit my line. My dad got sick of having to listen to the kids shows I watched as a child. So he told me the Power Rangers and Barney the Dinosaur died in the car crash with Princess Diana. So I couldn't watch them anymore. I didn't actually question it until I was quite old, embarrassingly. Our family were poor and lived in a house where the ceiling plaster had bowed so much that it bowed down bulging out. My dad told me that there was a World War II bomb buried in the ceiling, believed it for years and absolutely terrified the entire time. Outside of dumb lies your parents tell you as kids, my friend who worked at a gas station with a big food station that has some ground beef items told me they used kangaroo meat for their ground beef because it was cheaper than cow. I am gullible with my friends. That my dad moved out and rented a room in the house of a female friend for tax reasons. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. The microwave will explode if I put my face too close to it while it's heating food. That adults knew what they were doing. What was the wildest way you found out you were being cheated on? He was drunk at his 21st and while joking around with his friends he started listing off all the women he'd slept with in the uh, last year. I was standing right there and we'd been dating for two years at this point. He apparently wrote an address wrong and the love letter he wrote was returned to our home. It was a great way to come back from vacation. Her parents told me. W parents. Not me but my dad. His girlfriend at the time had been cheating on him with his friend who didn't know they were in a relationship. My dad found out when his friend told him he was going to propose to her. Had a dog who would chew up my wife's panties whenever we had sex. After seven years of marriage and two kids, the sex was very infrequent. And then one day, I found a pair of chewed panties. Then a few days later, another pair. Well, somebody's having sex and it ain't me. Me neither, bro. <laughs> me neither. We've been married a couple of months. Had a gut feel that something was going on. Checked her phone when she was in the shower, which I'd never done before. Yeah, she was fricking her ex for the previous few months and said nothing. Just passed her phone to her in the shower with messages open. Then came the begging. All her belongings were out on the footpath an hour later. Never heard from her again until had get the voice papers signed. Hardest day, but probably the best day of my life. Don't cheat. It's not that hard. You wake up to find you're the last person on earth. What do you do? Last person on earth stuff. You wouldn't understand. Hold an election, win 100% of the votes, become president, and move to the White House. Every month, make a poll. Always get 100% approval rating. You can vote in your own poll. Hey, good for you. Go back to sleep. Panic attack. Go to the nearest supermarket and eat all the cheese. All the cheese. Comment last on every YouTube video. Go to every adult store in my area and try everything they have. Get to a big house that has a lot of solar panels. Download things as fast as possible since the internet won't last long and get a frick ton of canned food, pasta, and flour. Also learn how to make bread. Bread. What's the perfect response to someone calling you ugly? My classic go-tos has always been, coming from you, I'll take that as a compliment. I may be ugly, but at least I ain't got no money. That's right. I might be ugly, but bro, you're saying that when you have zero money spreads. And you still married me. Yes. Please degrade me more. The more you can ham it up, the better. Well, you look exactly like me. So, when my nine-year-old daughter tries it on me, at a job interview, I got told, you're not that big. To which I replied, you're not that small. That was the end of the interview. Just a smile at them and a chuckle. Tell them, ugly recognizes their own kind. What is the most unexpected thing you've seen on live TV? In the UK, a TV personality and her son, who is disabled, were on a live TV show. From what I recall, the topic being discussed was online bullying. When her son was asked about what to say to these bullies, his response was, Hello, you c absolutely classic British TV right there. The OJ Simpson Bronco chase. They interrupted the NBA playoffs to show it live instead of the game. It was surreal. The reporter standing at a 45 degree angle, holding onto the street sign for dear life in a wind and rainstorm as he was reporting. And the two dudes casually walking past, not leaning whatsoever and without difficulty. Oh, you know, you gotta ham it up for the camera. I was watching soccer a few years ago and the referee stopped play for a foul. The slow-mo replay showed the fouling player grab the other player's shorts as he stepped across him and used them to try to stop his momentum. 
The shirt stretched in a long way, exposing his pee, which then proceeded to flap around in slow-mo for about five seconds, whilst the commentators pretended it wasn't happening. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Mike Tyson biting Evander Holyfield's ear. During the 2010 Winter Blizzard in the UK, while the reporter was talking live on location, a random dude was running around in the background wearing nothing but swimming speedos. I don't know if there's footage of it anymore, but it was wild, lamau. Identical twins of Reddit, who owns a pet after living separately? What was your pet's reaction when it saw two owners? My identical twin's dog has never reacted to me in a way that implied that he was confused. The human babies are a different story. I actually read a sad story about this a few years ago on Quora. A guy's identical twin brother had died and he inherited his brother's dog. The dog did not think the twin was his owner, except one day he happened to put on one of his deceased brother's pants. The dog came up to him and immediately started doing the wiggly happy dance until he spoke and then it was a light switch turned off and he became a barely tolerated stranger again. It was actually kind of heartbreaking to read. I got a cat. Cat decided and only liked my dad. Period. No exception. Well, except for my dad's twin brother. Loved him as much as my dad, but never confused them. My mother is one of twins. Linus the cat I had as a child was a complete worrier. Having been traumatized at a young age and being fearful of new people, yet he was the sweetest cat to us. Linus approached my aunt as soon as she arrived and cuddled up against her leg on that occasion. He was being scratched by her and everything was going well until he noticed my mother. Start with very fast head turns back and forth, then race up to the stairs and hide for hours. Poor infant. This time it's a twin. My dog adores me, but he hates my sister, which is strange. For instance, he growls at her when she approaches and hardly lets her touch him. He isn't like this to the rest of the family or friends, so I don't know why. Perhaps he believes she is a fraud? We have no idea. My dog was so confused at first, but he eventually realized that he had two people to give him twice the amount of cuddles and treats. Triplet here. My dog gets slightly confused at first, if I've been away. Like if I have to leave him with my parents and one of my sisters goes over, he thinks it's me and runs over all excited, but realizes it soon as he gets close enough to smell them. But it's not me. When I'm there, he has no confusion. He knows who I am and that my sisters aren't me. What's the the best response to a Christian saying you're going to hell. It makes Jesus sad when you say that. You seem to have a lot of hate in your heart. I'll pray for you. See you there then. Winky face. Shrug and say okay and walk away. You not caring riles them up even more. Yeah well that's just like your opinion man. Aren't we already here? According to your God. So are you for doing his job and judging. Had an old man tell me I'm going to hell for my tattoos. I said well save me a seat for judging me. His wife was <laughs> at him not me lol. Postmen and couriers of Reddit. What's the weirdest state someone's been in while answering the door. Naked dude soaking wet wearing nothing but a Cracker Barrel apron. First time, okay. So, uh, second time, something's going on here. One lady opened the door and packed her pants in front of me while she signed and her BF not so discreetly filmed it from behind her. When I was 13, I was sent to the neighbors to get my brother and tell him to come home. The guy opened the door naked, glitter coming out of his pants. He had a towel covering his goods. I asked him if my brother was there and thankfully he said no. I worked for a laundry delivery service and had a pretty regular route. So I saw a lot of the same customers pretty often. One guy would regularly answer the door in his old saggy underwear. I never reacted until I asked some coworkers if they'd ever experienced that with him. Our service sent text messages to the client with the driver's name, so you could pretty much guess if they were going to be male or female. 100% of the men said no, 100% of the women said yes. Next time I delivered to him, I looked at his crotch, and then back into his face and did a hard eye roll while sking just audibly. Never did it to me again. Should have had it send a female name, but then switch out and have a male driver and see what he did. I had a guy yell to give him a minute so he could find pants and showed up in only boxers. I asked him what happened to the pants, but didn't get an answer. I delivered a package to someone's porch, placed it on the floor, scanned it. Older gentleman opened the door, wearing just his underwear with his dog by his side. Asked me if I was going to leave it there or pick it up and hand it to him. I spoke with a firm no and then turned to walk away. Do you fart in front of your partner? Why or why not? Cute but kind of sad story. My grandma and grandpa were together for 40 years. My grandma never farted in front of him ever. She was diagnosed with cancer and after a good battle, was sent home on hospice. The day before she passed, she farted in front of him. It wasn't loud and it really stunk, but we all knew it was her. My grandpa didn't even blink and apologized to us and took the blame. It was something small, but it's been years since it happened and it still gives me that awe feeling. He knew how she felt and her stance about farting in front of her partner. An embarrassed older lady visited her doctor for help with the problem. Doctor, I don't know what's wrong, but I fart all the time. It's strange because they are both silent and odorless, but they keep coming out. In fact, I farted about six times just sitting here. What can I do? The doctor replied, here, take one of these pills every morning and then come see me in a week. A week later, the old lady came back to the doctor very upset. Doctor, these pills didn't help. They made it worse. I'm still farting, but now they stink horribly. The doctor replied, good. Now that we've cleared your sinuses, we can work on your hearing. No. I fart behind my partner, so it sneaks up on her. Based. <laughs> yes, sometimes I do it by accident and sometimes intentionally. When my partner visits, when we are in bed and we get quiet because they're trying to sleep, I'll randomly let one rip after about 10 minutes of silences and then we'll burst out laughing. Very rare 
entirely. I mean, I won't die of embarrassment, but I also won't do it out of respect for the fact that nobody else wants to smell that. The kids, though, I fart on them a lot. No, and for a really weird reason. When I was growing up, my cousins constantly farted. On each other, on me, out in public, obviously in their home, I found out so gross that I swore I'd never fart in front of anyone if I could help it. I've been married for 11 years, and I think I farted in front of my husband three or four times. I will hold in a good fart and go find my wife to present it to her. Yes, because it's funny. What is the most unusual thing you find attractive? Seeing someone flustered is the best. Watching a woman confidently ride a bicycle through city rush hour traffic. When a girl stands with one foot tilted on its side. When you can see a bit of her ear poking through her hair. It just gets me. Beautiful women driving cars. Shoulders. Yeah, sorry, high school girls, I'm the guy that the school administration was concerned about. I'm kind of oversharing here, but I'm kind of the same way. Oh, do I want to, do I want to tell this? Do I want to, do I want to out myself? No, it's fine. I've been playing Stardew Valley recently, and I've been playing modded Stardew Valley, and there's this mod called Stardew Valley Expanded, which had a bunch of characters to the game, and there's this mod for the mod called Seasonal Clothing, or what something, and so, uh, every season, the character's clothes will change, and in the fall season for this character, Sophia, she's wearing a sweater that hangs off of both of her shoulders, and nothing ever, like, hit me that I was like, oh, this is kind of cute, it's kind of hot, uh, until then, and I was like, whoa, shoulders, the frack. <laughs> Out of all things, Mason, editor, I'm really sorry, and you're probably, it's probably secondhand embarrassment for you here, man, uh, but you know what? I, I am nothing if I am not honest, all right? I work in Boston sometimes, and seeing a woman in business wear and sneakers is something I've always liked. When men turn up their jeans and you get a glimpse of bare ankle, your username is what awaits for you when you wake up the next day. How bad is the situation? Thunderous flatulence says, sounds like I won't need to set an alarm tomorrow morning. I destroy your ass. It's bad. Good morning. I have a feeling that I will be all right. Good morning, star frack. Same, same, but different. Spilling hot coffee. Typical. 97 rats in a trench coat. One very strange looking gentleman in a trench coat. Prophecy foretold. I knew this day would come. What made you realize you're old? Everything seems to be an act of letting go. Whenever I have to enter my birth date in a drop down menu. I was reading Rolling Stone at the doctor's office and realized I hardly knew any of the bands on the Billboard number one singles list. 90s music to my kids is like what 60s music was to me. When I started mixing cornflakes with frosted flakes because frosted flakes alone was too sweet. Seven year old me would be shocked at old me. The first time the barber asked if I wanted my eyebrows trimmed. Viggo Mortensen is now older than Ian McKellen was when he played Gandalf in Fellowship. Music that I listened to as a kid being played on the oldies radio station. Doing nothing became my favorite thing to do on the weekend. You are suddenly unable to lie. How f***ed are you? If that includes lies I tell myself, then very f***ed indeed. I'll find someone who's unable to tell the truth. Together, we'll guard a pair of doors. I want my lawyer. My response to how are you today becomes significantly darker. I'm already very skilled at giving a version of the truth without lying. Life as a civil servant does that to you. I've taken a vow to never answer anyone's questions ever again after a bad experience in the recent past. I'd be perfectly fine. Nothing would change. We haven't started yet, right? <laughs> no, we haven't, buddy. It's okay. What historical fact have you learned that ruined everything you ever thought you knew about this life? Ancient Antarctica was actually a rainforest, a lush and verdant paradise filled with flora and fauna. Despite the interesting fact that there was a whole continent of animals who lived on this planet that we'll never know about as their remains are locked beneath miles of ice. It blew my mind that Antarctica was only fully froze over about 35 million years ago, despite breaking from its supercontinent 180 million years ago. That means Antarctica supported independent life for about 145 million years, which ruined any sense I have for time and perspective. We really are specs on this planet. There was a Spanish explorer that first visited the Inca Empire and saw lots of prosperous cities and a great civilization, and told his peers about it when he returned home. But when other folks went to visit these said cities, they found nothing but jungle and thought the explorer lied about his story. The fact that blew my mind is that nowadays we discovered that his story was true and the people he encountered died from diseases brought into the new world, and the cities and civilization they built were consumed by jungle in the span of a few years. More of a fun one, but lighters predate strike matches by a couple centuries. They originated from repurposed flintlock pistols that ignited tinder and shoved in the barrel that were set aflame by the trigger mechanism. It says here in this history book that luckily the good guys have won every single time. What are the odds? Norm MacDonald. What is a popular belief that is scientifically proven wrong? Hiding under a highway overpass is actually not a good way to survive a tornado. It has been scientifically proven that the wind gets concentrated and the speeds increase underneath the overpass. If you aren't shielded by a bridge girder or something similar, you'll just get swept away and mulched. Your best bet for survival if you cannot escape the tornado is to find the nearest 
deep ditch, or hole. Goldfish have a three second memory. They don't, and supposedly you can even train them to do tricks. Cracking knuckles equals arthritis. No, it does not. <laughs> a frog thrown in a pot of boiling water will jump out immediately. If a frog is put in a pot of cool water and that water is slowly warmed, the frog won't notice and boil to death. This is indeed false. A frog will die no matter what. That rice will make the birds who eat it explode. Birds eat rice all the time. It's actually good for them, especially brown rice. I believe this myth was made up so people would stop throwing rice at weddings, but harming the birds wasn't an actual risk. It was getting rice grains stuck in your ear that was. Anything along the lines of the average person eats eight spiders in their sleep during the course of their life, yada, yada, yada. That if you shave, it'll grow back longer and thicker. What's a single valuable piece of information you know you would like to share? The most important piece of information you can give 911 is where you are, followed by what the problem is. Even if no other information is given, someone can still be sent to a location to see what the problem is. Bonus, if you accidentally call 911, just stay on the line and tell them there was an accident. It happens a lot. They won't be mad. If you hang up, they have to call you back. That is irritating. Never make a large financial decision without considering all the tax consequences. Also, 20,000 leagues under the sea refers to the distance traveled, not submerged depth. Some credit cards cover accidental damage to electronics for a predefined period of time. Use those cards for buying computers and electronics. Don't drive if you haven't slept in the last 24 hours. A person who has been awake for 24 hours is as cognitively impaired as a person who is drunk. It is perfectly possible to make no mistakes and still lose. That is not weakness, it is life. Yes, it's a Picard quote, but it's very accurate. A dropped knife has no handle, don't try to catch it. If you're outside during a storm and get a metallic taste in your mouth for no seemingly reason, then you're about to get struck by lightning. You always think you're gonna have more time. You won't. Make the most of today. Older women have read it. What is something young women are doing that puzzles you? Buccal fat removal surgery. The overdone lip injections. I can't wait for this trend to die. Blasting pictures of their young children all over social media with a thousand followers. Crying on the internet. I'm talking full on snot bubble crying. Maybe it's my childhood trauma talking, but I can't fathom having an awful thing happen to me and then whipping out my phone to tell my followers about it because maybe I have no followers. I just bury it deep and slap on a smile like my mom taught me. That sounds like it's repression, my friend. Taking pictures of yourself all the time. Even as a younger person, I can't imagine doing this. I'm bewildered by women who do not prioritize the ability to support themselves. Botox in their early 20s. There's nothing there. What wrinkles are you trying to fix? What obsolete companies are you surprised are still holding on in the modern world? I had some older woman knocking on my door at like 2 p.m. on a Wednesday trying to come in and give me a demo of a Kirby vacuum cleaner. Also, door-to-door -door salespeople are apparently still a thing in 2023. Jenny Craig just bottomed up this week. I'm surprised it lasted this long. Blows my mind that AOL.com is still a thing. I read that Netflix just announced they're going to stop mailing DVDs for rentals in the next few months. I thought they stopped doing that a long time ago. The Yellow Pages. Party City. Their stores are huge, and every time I go, there's less than 10 customers. Applebee's. I can microwave my own food. Thank you. What is not the flex that people think it is? My coworkers flexing their $900 car payments for new cars they didn't need to buy with high interest rates. I'm my own boss. Signed an MLM participant. Do you know who my dad or mom or parents are? No, no one cares. Being proud about being brutally honest when they're just rude. When adults brag about high school sports achievements like that's their whole personality. The I never take days off type who live at work. How bad does your home life have to be? Proclaiming you're an alpha male. In fact, it makes you look like a complete idiot and everyone hates you. Having a huge expensive wedding when you're not a wealthy person. What are you starting to dislike more as you get older? The expectation of being contactable 24 seven. Functioning on low sleep. I feel like in the last few years, my body's ability to do so has decreased drastically. It used to be that I could get like five to six hours a night during the week and recharge with a couple eight to tens on the weekend and be largely fine. Now, by the second or third day, I'm feeling really bad and have to pencil in a few hours to recharge. When they rearrange the grocery store, having to manage my body like it's a Tamagotchi. All these warning messages keep popping up and if I forget to feed it the right things at the right time and put it to bed at the right time and do the right exercises and avoid 73 arbitrary things, it will just start to moan and malfunction. Anything that takes place outside my house. Memories of myself. I remember things I've done and sometimes it makes me sick to my stomach with shame or sometimes I remember cool things I've done and it makes me sad that I'm still not doing these cool things. That my parents are also getting older and the fear of losing them soon terrifies me. Noise. What's the weirdest thing you've been told not to do because it's gay? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Suck a dick or something? <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not gay. I, I've never done that before. Not gay. I'm a straight man. I just thought it was a funny haha. -ha. Carrying a reusable bag for groceries. Here in Colorado, that's the law now. You don't get plastic bags anymore. Well, you do, but you have to pay for them. Drink wine, eat vegetables. That's right, fellas. It's gay to eat vegetables, because you know what? Cucumbers are vegetables, and you know what cucumbers look like? <laughs> Drinking with a straw because it reminds her of sucking She was serious.
hilarious. That girl has seen some real tiny weens, some real straws. <laughs> no girth on her mind. Cook. Fellas, is it homosexual to be able to cook food? Taking an umbrella when it's raining. I'm sorry, I don't like getting my hair wet, so I'm gonna bring an umbrella. Hum, or like the color purple. Wow, purple's my favorite color, and I hum sometimes. I'm not gay. My dad used to tell my brothers not to wash their hair so much, or they would turn gay. Dating women. What? Huh? Huh? What? <laughs>